The results are in. I tested positive. Nice. No, maybe not so nice. But that's not the result we're talking about. This autumn, I ask you, what is your favorite malt, yeast, and hops? You can just choose one and have it for the rest of your life. And I ask you on TikTok, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Pornhub, all over the place. And today you get to hear the result and what we're gonna do with this info. Nice, let's just kick it. I'm Dr. Hans, this is Dr. Hans Brewery, my channel about beer and home brewing. No beer today, so we're going, still going with the Julmust. This is a Swedish Christmas soda. If you're ever sending someone to Sweden, ask them to get you some Julmust. There's also available at Easter as Påskmust. Cheers! Not feeling very well, but the show must go on. So I pushed the broomstick up my ass just to be able to stand up. And then after this, I will most likely crash in the couch and watch some like German Bush movies from uh, 70s. Yeah, sounds nice. So I asked these questions three separate times and I got a lot of answers, hundreds of hundreds of answers. And it has not been so very easy to like get to a result, mainly because of how Reddit works. But in the end of doing the hard work, the uh, winners are so dominant so uh, small variations doesn't really matter and of course all of you couldn't stick to the rules just choosing one and the other some complication with the malt but in the end the winners in all of the different genres can we call it that today the hops the g's and the malt were so dominant before I announce the the winners the hops the g's and the malt why don't you comment down below what you think and we will see how right you are. Don't comment with your favorites. What did you think the overall favorites were? And don't wait until the end, no cheating. So comment now before you hear the results. We will see how right you were. So let's just kick this off. Let's start with your favorite malt. And the winner is... Pilsner malt. Yes, got a lot of different answers here, so of course, but when I summed it all together, Pilsner malt was a dominant winner, yeah, and it would probably be my choice also, because you can do so much with it, there was no like strings attached here really, other than you can just choose one of these ingredients, like uh, Desert Island um, in ingredients, of course you have a water. Appears the malt is the slightest roasted malt, so with that you can make all different kinds of malts really, like try to do chocolate malt, try to do maybe roasted barley, I don't know, biscuit malt, or all types of crystal meth. All types of crystal malts. So to me it's a very good choice. You choosing a so light malt means that we can do a lot of this. We're gonna come to what we're gonna do with this in this upcoming series about your favorite ingredients but malt alone doesn't make beer so let's jump to yeast the winner was USO5 and there were no strings attached here either. You could choose a liquid yeast, you could choose a dry yeast, and you will have an, an endless resource of that yeast to pick, but you can only choose one, of course. I'm maybe not super surprised, because it's, it's a stable yeast. Of course, many are on the quike train and a lot of other yeast strains now, but USO5 is a stable yeast and it can handle a lot of temperature. So it is a workhorse, but you can play a little ground with that yeast also. Have you tried fermenting USO5 under 17C and see what happens? Yes, you got the Fahrenheit here also. Nice! What happens is that USO5 can really push peach esters if you're fermenting it in a low temperature. When I started home brewing, I thought that high temp means more esters, but it's not that easy. Some strains produce cleaner beer when fermented hot, 
And US of 5 is one of those yeasts. If you from okay, if you're gonna push it real high, you may, might need to get some nostis, but esters and nostis, yes, that is the correct word, ain't the same thing. So if you stay in 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 that recommended uh, zone, it's it's a quite nice clean yeast. If you drop it in temperature, you will get millions of peaches, peaches for me, millions of peaches. Try it out and see how you like it. This is Elton Doctor from the future. I just want to tell you that my beer kit, Dr. Hans Brewery Beer Kit, is now 20% off right now. First link down in the description. Ships all over Europe. Nice. So go and check it out. And while you're down there, smash the like button. Just by smashing the like button, you are saving a unicorn. And 90% of you guys aren't smashing the like button. Don't you even care about the unicorns? USA 5 ain't really a bad choice, in my opinion. It's a stable workhorse. So uh, we will see what we can make with your G's choice. Now, hops. For hops, I didn't know what you were gonna pick, really. The Pilsen malt, I wasn't really surprised with. It would be my pick also. And USA 5, mm -hmm, maybe. But for hops, the winner is... Cascade. Not a bad hope at all. It would not probably would have been my first choice. I'm not really sure what my first choice would have been. I like a lot of hops. Cascade, we do get some floral, some grape. We can do a lot with that, I think. The only thing I would stay away from is like doing two big dry hop additions with Cascade. At least I have got some really grassy beers from that. But you just need to learn how much of the hops you can add at different stage in the brewing process. And it's not the same for all kind of hops. I like to say that hops have like a side note to them. So if you are adding too much of that hop, you can really push forward that side note and um, for Cascade, it's grassiness and it's not a thing that I really like. So what will we do with the result? So with this result, and I'm gonna need your help here, a lot of suggestions, recipe ideas. If you wanna send in recipe ideas for this, I will publish them for, for all of you guys so we can share how many different beers can we do with these three ingredients. And don't think that I need to make them all. Feel free to make them yourself. Send me one to try out here in this series. It would be awesome. Or if you have a YouTube channel, brew one of these. What should we call this beer? Let's call this beer the brewer's choice, and we can only use Pilsner malt, we can only use Cascade, and we can only use USO5. Of course, this is not gonna be like anus. You could use yeast nutrient, uh, Pruta Flock findings, whatever you want, like that. But for hops, for yeast, and for malt, we're gonna do that. But speaking of Pilsner malt, Pilsner malt really has a high diastic power, it means it has a lot of enzymes. So bringing that to a desert island, and if you're in the US, you can have the, the six rows have even greater diastic power than the two row that we can find here. But the, the normal grain is the two row, and that also have a high diastic power. It means it has a lot of enzyme, so you could add a lot of adjuncts to that on your desert island if you really need to like stretch it, but that was not in the rules. It was just a bonus. So what should we brew? And think the, the Pilsner malt, you are allowed to roast and do whatever. Just if you're doing it yourself, you can do whatever you want to it. So you, 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 we should be able to make a lot of different beer styles, but we can just use USO5, so we can't make a lager. And you can just use Cascade. But if you're doing USO5, try to ferment it really clean with Pilsner malt and uh, using the Cascade more or less to like bittering. Maybe you could mimic like a lager. 
I don't know, let's try it out. Speaking of lagers, I tried to see how fast I could brew a lager, and I brewed a lager in three days, and that's how that turned out. Or maybe this video will tickle your belly. We'll try to push any of these two bottoms and see what happens. Let me know which beer should we brew for brewer's choice. Yeah, cheers. See you in the next one.